Today, we're taking a look at some of the small towns in the United States with the absolute worst crime rates, and unpacking just how these towns got the way they are today. When it comes to crime, most people imagine cities packed to the brim with people, filled with dark, dangerous alleys crawling with knife-wielding muggers or other strangers with bad intentions. But you might be surprised to hear that there are some small towns out there that are dangerous too. It's easy to make the assumption that small towns where everybody knows your name are safe and sound. However, crime isn't confined to city limits, and sadly, people knowing each other doesn't stop them from hurting each other. For the purposes of this video, we're defining a small town as a town with a population of less than 50,000 people. We'll also be using the FBI's definition of violent crime, which includes murder and non-negligent manslaughter, rape, robbery, and aggravated assault and their definition of property crime, which applies to burglary, larceny theft, motor vehicle theft, and arson. So when we use these terms, that's what we're referring to. We've got over 30 towns on our list, starting in a town born from the Wild West. The former mining town of Globe, Arizona, founded in 1876, is tucked away between the mountains. As far as scenery goes, it paints a pretty picture, but the violent crime rate is 18.3 per 1,000 people. With a population of only 7,249, that's nothing to sneeze at. In May of 2023, a shootout broke out between U.S. Marshals and an armed robbery suspect in Globe, in which the suspect fired at the officers before barricading himself inside of a home. He had allegedly committed this armed robbery nearby in March, shooting and killing a person inside a business in Mesa. Globe also has a property crime rate around 71.7 per 1,000 people, vastly higher than the national average of 19.3. But that's nothing compared to our next town. Darlington, a town with a population of 6,092, includes a lot of charming aspects that people tend to associate with small towns. There are historic buildings to take a look at and quaint local festivals like the Sweet Potato Festival. However, the property crime rate is 85.8 per thousand people, meaning your possessions may not be as safe there as you'd think. Osceola, a town with a population of 6,779 people, attracts a lot of attention for its annual Heritage Music Fest, a celebration of blues music and the musicians who were born and raised in town. Unfortunately, it's also known for a violent crime rate of 25.9 and a property crime rate of 47.5, which may take the edge off the musical festivities. Marksville, Louisiana is located near the border between Louisiana and Mississippi. At the Marksville State Prehistoric Park and Museum, visitors can see Native American villages that date back over 3,000 years. There are other attractions in town, including the Spring Bayou State Wildlife Management Area. However, it may be the sort of place you visit and don't move to, with a violent crime rate of 22.2 and a property crime rate of 62, in spite of a population of only 4,946 people. So maybe things would be safer in a larger town? It depends on the town, but we definitely recommend not fleeing to this next one for safety. Pine Bluff, Arkansas has a population of 39,670 and a violent crime rate of 20.6 per 1,000 people. In August 2023, the 18th homicide of the year in Pine Bluff occurred just after 1 a.m. on a Monday morning. As police officers were responding to a call regarding the sound of gunshots, another person called to report that they had been shot. When the officers arrived on the scene, they found an injured man who was quickly taken to a local hospital. They found a second victim in the parking lot of a nearby apartment building, who was unresponsive and pronounced dead at the scene. With a population of 21,495, Gallup has a violent crime rate of 17.35 per 1,000 people and a property crime rate of 44.29. Over a period of one year, there were nearly 350 violent crimes in Selma, Alabama. The town has a population of around 19,300 and approximately 18 violent crimes per 1,000 people. According to the FBI, Robstown, Texas experienced 202 violent crimes over a one-year period, in spite of having a population of only about 11,500. There are approximately 17.4 violent crimes per 1,000 people in Robstown. Emeryville, California is a small Bay Area city with a population of 12,870 and a violent crime rate of 13.4. Not too bad, all things considered. However, the property crime rate is 211.9, one of the highest in the entire country. 
If you're ever in Emeryville, there is an approximately one in five chance that you could be the victim of a property crime. So if you're ever visiting, keep an extra close eye on your valuables. But in some towns, activism can sometimes lead to tragedy, as we'll see in our next town. Benton Harbor has nearly 10,000 residents, and with 179 violent crimes in one year, has a crime rate of 17.9 per 1,000 people. One recent example of violent crime in Benton occurred in June of 2023, just after the town's annual peace march, during which students from Benton Harbor High School campaigned against gun violence. An 18-year-old boy was killed in a shooting, and his body was found in an alley, a tragic event and a stark reminder of the crisis of gun violence in America. Muskegon Heights, with a population of 10,800 residents, has a violent crime rate of 18.3 per 1,000 residents. Espanola, New Mexico has approximately 10,000 residents, and with 268 violent crimes committed in one year, a crime rate of around 26.8 per 1,000 people. Espanola has a crime rate over 150% higher than the rest of the state. In January 2023, the mayor of Espanola, John Ramon Vigil, expressed concern over rising crime rates, describing a rise in drug trafficking, catalytic converter theft, and other property crimes. He wrote a letter to the state governor's office requesting additional support from state police to get the situation under control. The governor's office responded, saying, the state is always evaluating changing needs for officer staffing and distribution, and the NMSP is taking the mayor's request into account. Lake City has a population of around 12,497 and a violent crime rate of 15.92 per thousand residents. The property crime rate is 51.85, Located near Atlanta, College Park has a violent crime rate of 18.9 and a population of 14,700. There isn't a lot that separates Hartsville from other South Carolina small towns aside from a property crime rate of 88.8 .8 per thousand people. But our next town has shown it can differentiate itself from others, but not in the positive way you would hope. Opelika has a population of 16,800 and a violent crime rate of 22.2. In February of 2023, at 3 a.m. one night, a 19-year-old boy was playing with a gun when it accidentally went off, killing his 14-year-old sister. After the shooting, he ran to the neighbors for help. One of the neighbors happened to be an off-duty police officer who escorted the young man back to the house. By the time first responders made it to the house, the girl was dead. He was arrested and charged with second-degree murder. In this particular tragic case, the off-duty police officer did her job and did her best to help. However, this has not always been the case in Opelika. In 2011, the Miami News Times reported on a significant police corruption case in the perpetually troubled town. City memos obtained by the publication and confirmed by the city manager, officers told internal investigators that Opelika officers had had sex with offenders in their custody rather than moving forward to prosecution, stolen property from their police station, ordered lower-ranking officers to release suspects and dispose of reports in violation of state law, transport liquor in police vehicles for consumption at private parties, and played with tasers on the job. The report's comments section included the phrase, the department is built on deception. The corruption persisted beyond 2011 and continued until at least 2020, when critics called for a complete overhaul of the department. Dillon has only 6,600 residents and a violent crime rate of 19.1. The second Lake City on this list, this town of 6,800 residents has a violent crime rate of approximately 18.8 .8 per thousand people. Lumberton has a population of about 21,700 and with 393 violent crimes reported in a single year, has a violent crime rate of 18.1 per 1,000 people. In May of 2023, Lumberton experienced a staggering three murders in 24 hours, all apparently unrelated to one another. All were described by the county sheriff as 100% unnecessary, cruel, and cowardly acts. The first murder occurred just before 8.30 p.m. on a Friday night when deputies were called to the scene of a shooting. There they found a man dead, and the suspect was a convicted felon now facing charges of first-degree murder. The second murder occurred just before 10.40 p.m., when the sheriff's office received another call about a shooting. They arrived on the scene to find a man dead, with no leads on a possible suspect. The third murder occurred late Saturday morning, just after 11.33 a.m. This time, the call was about a man who had already been found dead. 
When officers arrived, they determined the cause of death to be assault. A 49-year-old man was arrested for the crime and charged with first-degree murder and altering, destroying evidence. The sheriff took to Facebook following his harrowing 24 hours to discuss his feelings on the incidents. The problem is with some of the people in the county, there are multiple underlying factors such as drug use and abuse, alcohol abuse, mental health issues, just simply being mean and devilish and more. He continued, My detectives and my whole office need prayer. My homicide criminal investigation and crime scene investigators are tired. They work all week and all weekend, working nearly 48 hours straight thus far. They have families too and can't be with them. This outburst in violent crime is shocking to be sure, but residents of this next town, known to be the most dangerous town in Alabama, are unfortunately too familiar with it. Anniston is located about 60 miles east of Birmingham in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Founded in 1872, the town is known for metal products and textile production. It's also, unfortunately, known for a high rate of violent crime, 33.3 per 1,000 people. In 2019, 24-7 Wall Street dubbed Anniston the most dangerous town in Alabama. This has been linked to poverty in the town, as 20% of its residents live below the poverty line. Oftentimes, it's assumed that busy vacation areas are safer than others, but that isn't true for the next town in the list. Ocean City, Maryland is a popular tourist destination, drawing in visitors from all over Maryland and surrounding states each summer to enjoy its boardwalks, amusement parks, and beaches. Compared to other towns on this list, the violent crime rate is fairly low, only 13.2. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for property crime rate, a shocking 104.3. In November 2021, an elderly man was carjacked in downtown Ocean City. The 73-year-old man was robbed by three male individuals, one armed with a handgun, who struck him on the back of the head with the weapon and then stole his vehicle. A 15-year-old boy was driving, and a 17-year-old, a 14-year-old, and a 12-year-old were also involved. It's alarming to see such young perpetrators involved in violent crimes. However, it should be noted that Ocean City's police department has attracted criticism for the use of disproportionate force against nonviolent offenders. In June 2021, videos surfaced of an officer responding to an individual vaping by ramming his knee into him several times while three other officers held him down. The officer involved also used a taser. This violence was in response to the young man vaping on the boardwalk. The incident resulted in lawsuits and calls for an internal investigation. Then, two years later, in July of 2023, it happened again. A 34-year-old man was arrested for vaping on the boardwalk, and after he was restrained on the ground, he and several witnesses reported that one of the officers involved began to punch him. Police claimed that he intentionally smoked his vape after being told to stop. They did not account for the punch that appeared to be thrown on camera. With all of this talk about crime and violence in small towns, it's important to acknowledge that it's not always the criminals perpetrating the violence. This Illinois town has a population of about 27,000 people, making it one of the larger small towns on this list. In one year, the FBI reported 757 violent crimes and a violent crime rate of around 28.3. Alexandra, Louisiana barely makes the cut as a small town with a population of 48,000. Per 1,000 people, it has a crime rate of 18.4. The town of West Memphis has a population of just under 25,000 and a violent crime rate of 18.5 per 1,000 people. In January 2023, the discovery of a local woman's body inside a burning car in a ditch, eight years after she survived a brutal carjacking, sparked a conversation about the issue of crime in West Memphis. Less than two weeks prior to this incident, a teenage boy was shot multiple times outside of an apartment complex. Still, it's worth mentioning that crime in West Memphis has been on the decline over the years. West Memphis's mayor, Marco McLennan, addressed the subject of crime in the area, saying, The city of West Memphis has seen a remarkable reduction in crime activity. We are committed to continuing this trend through more community engagement initiatives that directly target troubled youth who are more likely to commit crimes if not addressed at an early age. While the local government has been successful in combating crime in West Memphis, the government has had the opposite effect in our next town. Alexander City has a population of 14,700 and a violent crime rate of 18.8. .8. Alexander City has a complicated relationship with the notion of crime as a whole and came under fire in 2015 for participating in what many critics called the criminalization of poverty. 
In September 2015, the Southern Poverty Law Center filed a lawsuit that alleged that Alexander City ran a modern-day debtor's prison in which defendants who had failed to pay court fines were forced to serve time in the municipal jail at a rate of $20 per day. Once the suit was filed, the policy was changed, but this does not change the fact that prior to this change, the policy was a violation of a 1983 Supreme Court decision that had banned jailing people for the inability to pay fines. The lawsuit focused on a two-year period in which 200 people were thrown in jail for failing to pay fines, primarily connected to traffic violations. Alexander City finally agreed to a settlement of $500 for each plaintiff per day that they spent in jail. The SPLC Deputy Legal Director, Sam Brook, commented on the issue at large, saying, The thing about modern-day debtors' prisons is you never know where they're going to be. They happen in places with local jurisdictions that have little oversight. That's the only way a modern-day debtor's prison can flourish. It only happens with people who are otherwise not accountable and no one is paying attention to them. It seems to often be the case, whether talking about violent crime rates or municipal violations of people's rights, that awful things can be allowed to happen when nobody is paying attention. Funnily enough, this city was originally named Detroit, but its name was changed to Florida City when the town was incorporated in 1914. Florida City is a suburb of Miami with a population of 12,735 and is adjacent to attractions such as Everglades National Park, Biscayne National Park, and the Florida Keys. The town itself is made up of mostly farms and gas stations and has a violent crime rate of 26.2 and a property crime rate of 72.7. Cocoa, Florida has a violent crime rate of 20.7 and a population of 17,800 residents. Monroe barely squeaks onto this list with a population of just under 50,000. It has a notable problem with violent crime with a rate of around 30 violent crimes per 1,000 people. The city has been the subject of several notable cases in recent years, including a 2022 case in which a woman allegedly stabbed her father with a knife after being inspired to do so by the movie Child's Play, which she simply referred to by the name of its famous killer doll, Chucky. The victim woke up to the sight of his daughter standing over him with a knife, at which point she stabbed him in the shoulder. During questioning, the accused explained that she watched Chucky, then grabbed a knife and stabbed her father three times. She was arrested for aggravated domestic abuse battery. That same year, there was a fatal shooting at the Oyo Hotel, that led to the arrest of two men. These are just a handful of the sorts of incidents that have contributed to the violent crime statistics in the city. While our next town isn't particularly violent, you'll be hard-pressed to secure your property if you want to call this place home. Glendale, Colorado, a suburb of Denver, with a population of 4,552, is one of the safer towns on the list when it comes to violent crime. The rate for these kinds of crimes is 9.5 per 1,000 people. Property crime is a different story, though, occurring at a rate of 177 per 1,000 people. It isn't an especially violent place to live, but those visiting or moving to the town should invest in top-notch security systems for both their home and especially their car, as the Denver area has one of the highest car theft rates in the country. With a population of only 4,200, Oakwood saw 125 violent crimes in one year, and has a violent crime rate of 29.6. Kotzebue, a remote Alaskan town located about 30 miles from the Arctic Circle, is frequently referred to as the gateway to the Arctic. There are 3,300 residents and a crime rate of 33.7 per thousand people. It should be noted that Alaska overall is known for higher crime rates. Nearly 50% of Alaskans have reported that they feel unsafe in the town where they live. The exact reason for this is up for speculation, though it's been suggested that the rural nature of the state and the difficulty accessing law enforcement or other forms of support may be a contributing factor. Kotzebue is considered the most dangerous place in Alaska, a state already known for being more dangerous than others. There's a 1 in 23 chance of a resident in Kotzebue becoming the victim of a property crime, and a 1 in 30 chance of a resident becoming the victim of a violent crime. Meanwhile, the odds of becoming the victim of a violent crime in Anchorage, the largest city in Alaska, are 1 in 76. In June of 2023, Kotzebue police received a report of someone bleeding on the street. First responders found the victim, a 33-year-old man, bleeding from multiple knife wounds. 
He was taken to the hospital, but succumbed to his injuries there. The victim had apparently accused his girlfriend of having an affair with another man. When a fight broke out between the two men, ending in a stabbing, the victim's girlfriend and the other man were arrested on charges of first-degree and second-degree murder. In November 2021, a Kotzebue man was sentenced to seven years in federal prison for cyber-stalking two individuals. The man targeted an attorney in the Alaska Attorney General's office, as well as the then-president of the native village of Kotzebue. The man began to overwhelm the victims with dozens of phone calls, voicemails, and emails in order to retaliate against them, as well as intimidate them. Another unfortunate story took place in 2016, where three adult brothers held another man at gunpoint in order to rob him for alcohol money. During the confrontation, the man holding the gun fatally wounded and killed the person they were robbing. The three men then proceeded to steal the victim's snow machine in an attempt to hide the evidence. The brothers were captured and sentenced to prison for more than 15 years. But sometimes crimes can lead to unsolved mysteries, as we'll see happen in our next violent town. Bessemer is an economic hub in the Birmingham Hoover metropolitan area. With a population of nearly 26,600 people, it has a violent crime rate of 33.8 per 1,000 people. Varying sources claim that the odds of being the victim of a violent crime in Bessemer are anywhere from 1 in 9 to 1 in 30. In December of 2021, Bessemer became the subject of national scrutiny when Michael Richard, an urban explorer with a popular TikTok page, was shot and killed outside the Knight's Inn, an abandoned, burned motel in town. He was found dead outside the motel's ruins on December 30th, 2021, still inside the neon yellow Hyundai Sonata he had been driving. His wallet was gone, but his cell phone was still in the car with him. Crime Stoppers, as well as the Richard family, are offering a combined reward of $10,000 for information that might lead to Michael's killer. Michael's father, Max, spoke about the lack of answers surrounding the case. It's been really hard, but it's not surprising. It happened at a place where there was no electricity, no cameras. It was off a beaten path. His brother commented that Michael had been at the motel several times before and the Bessemer police had warned him about being there. Bessemer has also been the location of recent drive-by shootings, as well as other violent crimes. Sauk Village, a town with a population of 9,698, is pretty much an ordinary suburban town at first glance. However, the town has a violent crime rate of 55 per 1,000 people. For context, that's 10 times the rate of violent crime per 1,000 people in New York City. According to a data analysis performed by SafeWise, Sauk Village is the most violent small town in the entire United States. There are a variety of factors that can contribute to the rate of crime in an area, though the most common for increased crime rate is high rates of poverty. Poverty can make people desperate and can force people to act out in ways they might not if they had the resources, the shelter, and the mental and physical health care they needed. The opioid epidemic is also to blame, as well as methamphetamine issues in small-town America. Drug abuse can contribute to that poverty, to that desperation, and to people acting without their better judgment. But surely these specific towns are exceptions, and cities are still much less safe than small towns, right? Well, like most things in this world, the second you delve beneath the surface, it's a bit more complicated than that. Though the risk of homicide might be higher on average in cities than smaller towns, cities are, in many ways, safer. According to a study published in the Annals of Emergency Medicine, the risk of death by injury, either from a violent crime or an accident, is more than 20% higher in the countryside than in urban areas. It varies depending on age as well. In rural areas, children and people over the age of 45 are at greater risk of being killed by firearms, whereas in the city, people between 20 and 44 are at the greatest risk. Another threat that is higher in rural areas is car accidents. Car accidents cause 27.61 deaths per 100,000 people in rural areas and 10.58 per 100,000 people in cities. It also shouldn't be left out of the discussion that residents of New York City live an average of 2.2 years longer than the national average lifespan. Living in a city also puts people in closer proximity to emergency services such as hospitals. But just as not all small towns are safe, not all cities are safe either. In Detroit, it can take an average of 58 minutes for the police to answer a 911 call in an emergency. Young men are at a greater risk of death by homicide in major cities. The fact of the matter is that both cities and small towns have their own potential dangers, and there is no guarantee that residents of either will be inherently safe from harm. 
The world is an unpredictable place, whether you're in a small town or a city. The best thing to do is be aware of your surroundings, practice caution, and look out for each other. Keeping our community safe keeps us and everyone around us safer, no matter where we are.